Today's lesson is about those really weird sounding runs, those runs that seem to sort of defy our sense of consonance and dissonance. I'm talking about things like this. Or this. Or this. So what I want to do now is I want to show you an overall approach that you can use to create your own runs, and I also want to share with you some that I like. Okay, so here's the overall approach. We're going to start with a low bass note. Then we're going to come up and we're going to think in terms of shapes, of a left-hand shape and a right-hand shape. We will arpeggiate the left-hand shape, then arpeggiate the right-hand shape, and then come up one octave and do the same thing. And you can keep going, you can go up however many octaves you want. Now there's one more really important point that I think really helps to uh, make the whole weirdness factor work here. The left hand is going to play a relatively consonant shape, while the right hand uh, gets to play a more dissonant shape. When you put these together, a neat thing happens. So you're going to play your low bass note first, and then you're going to play a consonant shape. And I think that right there helps to establish the overall quality or the overall direction uh, that this sound is going. After that, we get some dissonance, then we come up uh, the next octave and we sort of bring it back with more consonants, and then we get more dissonance, uh, and on and on if you want to keep going up. And uh, so we get this wonderful ambiguity as we go back and forth between consonants and dissonance. Okay, so let's check out some of the runs that I did earlier. Now, uh, for the first one, remember our left hand shape is going to be consonant. This is over C minor, C minor 7, and I, I like this one right here. It's just, you know, what we would think of as an E flat major triad. Of course, this is the flat 3, 5, and flat 7 uh, over C. Now, um, that's my consonant left hand shape. Then, for my right hand shape, I used what we would normally think of as B7. Now, I know that doesn't necessarily all, you know, go with what we would think of when we're thinking of C minor, but like I said, this is an area of music where we're, we're, we're kind of getting into a more ambiguous territory, uh, kind of between consonants and dissonance. You can think of this as a polychord, certainly, because this is like, uh, you know, B7 over E flat, or if you include the C, then it's uh, B7 over C minor 7. That definitely uh, can be helpful, but number one, I don't know that my brain necessarily is processing it that way, and number two, you don't have to necessarily use standard, you know, chord shapes. You could use, you know, various clusters and things instead. Anyway, for our first one, so we've got E flat major and then B7. I'll do it slowly. That's it, and you could do it slowly or, or, or more quickly, however you'd like. That's the first one. All right, let's check out the second run that I did. Uh, again, I used the E flat major shape in my left hand. In my right hand, though, I used this right here. Uh, we could think of this as just A major triad in root position with the A doubled an octave higher. You put them together and you get this. And once again, we could think in terms of a polychord. We could call it A over E flat or A over C minor if you want to include C minor seven if you want to include the uh, the low C. Uh, here's what this one sounds like, kind of slowed down. Okay, so for the third run that I did, I used a different left hand shape. I used this right here. C, E flat, F, and B flat. Again, a fairly consonant shape in this context. Then for the right hand shape, I used this, B, E, A. And talk about dissonant, I mean, first off, we have a major seventh that's competing against a flat seven there, and then I've also got a major third over a supposedly minor, you know, uh, kind of sound, and it's competing against the flat three over there. So, you know, but it goes back to what I was saying before about how when they come together, the result is this just sort of wonderfully ambiguous minor kind of sound. It sounds like this. Don't forget to download the PDF for this lesson.